the most important thing um, to realize the difference between my art teaching methods and any other teaching method is that I've discovered that we have four major comparison skills that we're born with and we need to call upon those comparison skills in order to be able to draw a realistic likeness. But the beauty of um, the courses that I teach is we understand that learning to draw realistically is only the beginning. It's not the end in itself. It's a means to the end. So we learn in a very structured, very formalized way so that we can get a logical grip on the process. And once you've learnt those um, basic fundamental principles, then you get to really explore and you get to really express yourself because you're freed then um, to be able to take what's inside of you and bring it out onto the page. You know, yep. so many people find that when they're trying to draw that what they have in their mind or the vision that they have for their picture just does not come out of their hand. And it's that space between um, when the vision is in your mind and into coming out of their hand that we're going to talk about a lot today. And it's the area that I'm very passionate about. It's about helping people to really connect with the and the hand, eye and mind. Something that I began to discover when I was teaching live in the real live world um, in Australia. So this is going back five or six years ago and even longer because we were teaching for four years. So about nine years ago, I started to realize that everybody who came to art class, they were complete beginners, but they all had this basic ability to get very close with the drawing. You know, everybody was just a tiny bit off with their measurements all the time. And it was so consistent that I realized we all have these um, you know, four major comparison skills. We're all born with them, but we just need to refine them and combine them in a unique way that's necessary for drawing. Now, I really need to point out too that the wonderful and amazing and incredible Betty Edwards, author of Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain, um, she talks about the four major perceptive skills, four major perception skills, and I sort of see um, this research that I've been doing as kind of recognizing what Betty has discovered but yet going a step further and deeper. So I say to myself it's not just a matter of um, your perception because we're not just looking at it and analyzing it. We've got to go that step further. We've got to actually compare. This is a big difference. Um, when you're looking at something, if you're just staring at it and you're waiting for your creative brain to come in or to kick in or that perception to work, sometimes it's really frustrating um, because your voices are in your head chatting to you and you're just thoroughly distracted. But with my unique drawing method, if you concentrate on the comparisons, and there's only four, four major comparison skills, then you're automatically including that logic brain in the process. And that's when the magic starts to happen. Because if you can include the logic brain, you're getting this beautiful synergy that goes back and forth between the creative and the logic. And it starts to zoom very quickly, Mark, just ping, ping, like that. Is, is going to be making her, her whole lesson this morning available to you as a free PDF. Uh, I'll give you instructions on how to get it, uh, it, it this evening because they're, they're, they're still working on it. Cindy and Stuart are both, are, are, they're still working on the PDF. Uh, she'll be go covering the whole thing on video for us. You'll see that, but you'll have your own copy of it. And then also we're, we're selling something today. It's a little $7 PDF lesson that is um, equally, um, yeah, there you go, Cindy. <laughs> an equally thorough lesson. These lessons are like 40, they're like little courses in themselves on how to draw the, this, this child's eye. This is Cindy's daughter's eye. It's about 48 pages long, how to draw that eye. Uh, we would love to show you in a video, but we don't have time for that. We're doing the Apple today. But you're going to have access to both of these lessons, one free. I'll give you the code to it this evening. And then this other one is one you pay for. And uh, you'll get Can to I keep it. just point out to Mark that the um, drawing of the eye, it's recorded in 30 steps. It's a long PDF. That's the one that we're selling. Um, that's not included in the course notes. So I'm doing yeah. a lot of little extra tutorials now that we're yeah. having as add-ons because it's extra practice.
And this whole color pencil module is, is brand new to the course this year, and it's, we're all very excited about it. Cindy, have you got time to... Oh, go ahead. Thank tennis there, um, Mark. I'd just love to thank Tennis, um, Tridale. Um, yes. Tennis has co-authored the um, two color pencil units of our course, and basically Tennis just came to me, and she was doing some great pencil work, and at the time, I didn't have the time to create the pencil uh, modules, and so I asked Tennis if she could uh, translate our painting units into color pencil, and she's done an incredible job, and I just want to really thank her, because people just love them, and it's really reignited a passion that I've had for colour pencil, which I sort of had left dormant for a couple of years, but now I'm back into it full swing the last six months and and really loving it. It's really exciting. So thank you very much to Tannis. It's just Thank amazing. you, Tannis. Tannis, is one of, uh, she has worked with Cindy as one of her uh, esteemed instructors. Yeah, colour pencils, increasingly popular with collectors There's uh, in fine arts, and of course illustrators love them too. And I've never seen colour pencils used the way Tannis and Cindy use them. Well, I thought I'd start by um, just talking about different papers and different colour pencil brands. Um, the paper that you use for colour pencil is really a personal thing, like, like with anything that um, we're painting or drawing. And there's a number of papers that I really love. My absolute favourite is the Strathmore Bristol Smooth. Um, I don't know if any of you have seen this or have used this paper, but I absolutely yeah. adore it. It's really perfect for doing the very fine realism, photorealism drawings that I'm working on at the moment. And a little bit later on, I'm going to be showing you and taking you step by step to, uh, through drawing this apple. So this is my apple. And we'll be drawing that together. I'm just going to walk through drawing a smaller one. But I'll give you the whole PDF for that tomorrow when that's finished. There's another paper that's really my favourite, and I know you can't see it, but it is very, very thick. You can't probably see the texture, but this is the Saunders Waterfoot, the um, Saunders Waterfoot CP. So it's um, not pressed, and it's lovely and thick. It's 300 pounds, and I absolutely love this. This is just a medium grain texture, so it's absolutely beautiful, and I really love that as well. I did the strawberry on that, so I'll just show you my little strawberry. You can see how thick it is. I've actually cut it out. Yeah, now that's in the course notes, in our course notes, how to draw that little strawberry. But that it's was in used the complete with drawing course, paper. course notes. Another really nice paper is the Archer's, um, Archer's Smooth Paper. That's really lovely as well. Nice and thick though. So a lot of um, colour pencil artists also use pastel paper, use coloured pastel paper. You can buy them in pads and all different colours and they're really, they're really beautiful as well to use. But I mostly just use the Bristol paper. Now the important thing when you're thinking about paper for colour pencil work is it must have enough, enough tooth. So tooth means the ability to sort of grip the colour pencil. You don't want it to be too, the surface to be too shiny or too flat. So just make sure you've got a little bit of grip. But if you have too much texture that can play havoc with your drawing too. It depends on what you're actually drawing. You can use the texture to your advantage, or you can have nice smooth paper. So it just depends on what you're drawing. I prefer the smooth paper, the smooth Bristol paper for um, doing this smooth, very um, hyper-realistic sort of drawing. Now, the type of pencils that you use are also really important. Um, I love using the Prismacolor, the Premier pencils. They're really, really beautiful pencils. They are very, very soft in the core and so they can break very easily and I've been reading all over the internet how people get frustrated with them breaking. <laughs> but if you treat them very gently, um, they can be really good. I really love those and I think the main reason that I'm able to achieve this sort of hyper-realism drawings I'm achieving is because of the Prismacolor pencils because I have tried it, Mark, with other pencils and just can't get the same results. So. I'm really, really thrilled with them. I love the Prismacolor pencils. Other things that you need, I love this type of um, pencil sharpener. That This is just one with three little holes, but the hole that I use the most is the really long one so that I can shave to my pencil to a really long exposed um, area of, of colour pencil. And just a simple little electric eraser, that's just a Derwent, um, a simple plastic eraser, putty, 
And then there's a product called Gams Gamsol. I use that sometimes, but I didn't use it for this product. Gamsol is just um, pure odorless mineral spirits. So all of these materials are going to be listed in the booklet tomorrow anyway that we give out, but they're just a basic idea of the materials I use. Now, with my reference photos, Mark, I always take my own reference photos, and I love to see them on the computer screen. And so what I do is I'm, I'm looking at the computer screen with the image, and then I've got my drawing usually on a little easel in front of the screen, and then I use a paintbrush, a long-handled paintbrush, to point at the screen. Okay, okay. What that does is that helps me from getting lost where I'm up to because a lot of this is really wow. detailed work. And especially with the eye drawing, you know, all those little tiny bits and that mini cosmos, you can get lost in the drawing. So I use a paintbrush and point where I'm up to with the drawing. Um, yeah, that's about it for now. It's all very physical tools, and tools are so important in the fine arts. Um, Good. Well, Cindy, is this a good time for me to share the screen with the group? Yes, or are please. You? Okay. Go down away from that's the little color sh color swatch. So you just keep moving. That's the setup that I use for my um, drawing from the screen. Okay. So keep on going, Mark. There's your photo reference. Yep, that's the photo reference of the apple. There's your initial sketch. The, well, no, that's the outline that's being transferred to our drawing paper. Um, but what I showed below was how to achieve that initial outline drawing and then okay. I discussed I discussed about using a vertical and horizontal central line to start with. So you rule the horizontal and vertical line through the center of the apple and then you capture all of the different angles um, that make up the outer edge of the apple. So once you've captured all those angles you can then easily and quickly draw the curves within that shape. And I'm not sure if a lot of people realize, but drawing in angles before you draw curves is certainly the most simple way to draw curves. So mm. you put it into angles first, then the curves. And that's a construction drawing method. You can see there the result of the, um, the outline drawing in angles on the right side there that I've sketched. And then there's the final... Um, sketch that I've created in angles and then if we go to the next stage you'll see the drawing of the apple there within yes. the angles. And so that's all freehand, that's a very loose, very very loose method of sketching with that I'll demonstrate shortly. And then the next slide we move into the grid method. Now a lot of people may or may not be aware of what the grid method is but the important thing when using the grid method is to stick to the uh, measurements on the side of the squares. Always compare the um, shape or line that you're working on to the halfway mark. So see the little halfway marks that are all put in there? You always think to yourself, am I before the halfway or after the halfway mark when you're drawing with the grid? So you can keep on moving down. Now when you're working with the grid method and drawing the apple, it's good to do your outline first, like in that little drawing you see at figure 11. So you see the outline of the apple drawn in. And we'll just use the grid method there. Now this is drawing on very thin bond paper or just typing paper, sketching paper. It needs to be thin because later we transfer this drawing to our good quality paper. Mm. And that's really important because we don't want to have to rub out all that grid and all that indenting, do we? So on to the next drawing. I'm just showing you, and that, that's the drawing now with all the little details put on. So I've just shown you two different ways that you can achieve that outline drawing. Now, a lot of um, colour pencil artists are fully aware of how to draw the outline drawing. They're very efficient at it using one of those methods or other methods. So what they do instead is they can often either use an overhead projector just to get that outline or I don't use overhead projector but sometimes I'll just trace over the outline of the photograph or the outline of my sketch. It depends on what you want to do and to save time one of the best and easiest ways is to just print out the photograph on a, a very thin paper, normal printing paper and then you can use the graphite transfer method. So that's next if you scroll down. So the graphite transfer method needs to be used regardless of how you come up with your first initial outline drawing. And the graphite transfer method can include either using star roll paper, 
some sort of graphite transfer paper. Another sort is called trace down. But you can use that paper that I've got there, that grey paper. And basically what you do is you have your drawing on the top and then you attach that to your quality drawing paper using three little pieces of sticky tape at the top and then you slip the graphite drawing paper in between the graphite paper and make sure that it's face down. And then to the next slide, Mark. Then you just press hard and go over your image. And then on the final drawing, that figure 16, you can see that it's come through onto the next page. But don't press too hard because you'll get indentations. Mm. So that's how you can transfer your drawing to the quality paper. But keep on going. What we'll do is we'll move through a little bit quicker now because I'll demonstrate this in a second. Here we've just begun the first layer and colouring in the first layer of the apple with some yellow. And you can keep going to the next drawing. We've started to add the details here. And when you colour that first layer, make sure that you only put on a tiny bit of pencil because we don't want to overfill the surface. We're also using strokes that follow the shape of the form. And we don't always do that when we are um, shading with colour pencil because when we're colouring with colour pencil, sometimes you get what we call the halo effect if you're following the shape of the form. And that's when you get all lines through it and it's not a very nice look. But in this case, we want to see some lines through it, some hatching lines. So we are following the shape of the form. Hmm. And we've just begun to add some fine detail there as well, Mark. I'll keep going through because I am going to demonstrate it in a second. And then we're adding more colour into the form there. And in that area there that's darker, that's what we call the shadow edge area. So you can see where the light has hit the form. That's what we call the full light area, the little white highlight. And then the shadow edge is the dark area just below that, and we're building that up at the moment. We work on that shadow edge, so you keep on going. And then we're adding further layers, we're adding more red, we're just building up. I always put the details on in between if I'm doing things like fruit. So you do one, a couple of very fine layers, and then you add the detail, and then you build up more layers, and then you go back and put more detail on again. So if you go to the next slide, you can see I'm starting to build it up again. And then yes. the next slide. And the next. And now in this stage here, this is where I call the magic stage starting to really happen. During this stage, I'm really getting a deep understanding of the form. Are we going to say something, Mark? Well, n no, the magic stage is, is something that happens in all of Cindy's drawing exercises that we that we experience as students and it's it's all it's it's the very last stage it's amazing what happens there oh sorry mark I'm sorry, i was going to say and yeah. to get that feeling of magic happening what i find that we need is we need two things we need really good reference materials so we do need to be able to see the apple either the real live apple or some great high quality photographs of the apple but the other thing that we need, the second thing that we need is the knowledge of light and shade theory. And this, putting those two things together really enables the magic to happen because when you understand why there is shadow there, see that big dark part, you can then add that to your drawing and emphasise it. You can exaggerate it. You can add the form the shadow and really, really mould the drawing onto your page. So at this stage of the drawing, I'm beginning to really understand how the apple curves over the page and it sort of falls like a waterfall. You know, all those little textures are coming out from the centre and just bursting down the apple. But I really am working very freely and very quickly at this stage and I'm just scribbling in those dark little shapes in there, moving very rapidly and really, really feeling that form because I understand that that's the shadow edge and then there's reflected light around the base there just bouncing back onto the bottom of the apple. So I know to lighten that area back. And then the cast shadow, I know to make that really dark and that's the shadow underneath the apple. So with that understanding of form, I can add to the apple. I don't just copy the photograph. I add to it, I give it life and energy, and I'm just loving it at that stage. This is when the fun happens. Yes, and the form bursts forth, and it can happen whether your reference is that good or not sometimes when you when you understand the principle Cindy's talking about. That's so true, Mark. We can go on to the next slide. 
So with this one I've just added the final finishing touches with the teeny weeny details and just gradually building up that form. You can see the final image next I think. Wow. Yep, that's the final artwork. And I've done a lot of burnishing there where we use the pencil to blend the colours together but I really want to get on and do some demonstrating so that everybody can see all this happening. And I'll go as far as I can with the time that we've got. Okay. And just get as much done as I can. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to take you through the stages that I just showed you in the PDF and so I can demonstrate them live to you. I'll just point my um, webcam down to my working surface here so that you can see the surface. Okay. And I know it's upside down, but you'll be able to get an idea of the process. Can you? Can everybody see that? Yes, we see it upside down, and they see a fuzzy a, image the, the, because the the broadcast is quite clear. very clear because of the um, you know the broadcasting. But like I said, this is all recorded anyway in step by step in the PDF tomorrow. But basically, what I'm doing here, I have a photograph of the apple, and I have some little measurements on here. I've already done these measurements, so what I've done is I've ruled the apple basically in half. Now, we go for this horizontal measurement first. So I've checked and I've found that it's about 8 centimetres wide, and then I've found the halfway mark at 4 centimetres. And then I've turned it round, and I've positioned my ruler so that it's in the centre, so at 5 centimetres, and then ruled a line that's 10 centimetres long. So I've come up with a little cross. That's all I'm going to use the ruler for, is just that little vertical cross. And I do the same on here. So I'm just going over to my drawing. I'm lining it up on the horizontal line, doing a little sketchy line there. And then I'm making sure that my central line is parallel to that central line there. And this one is the same height at 10 centimetres high, centred at 5 centimetres. So what we're ending up with is a little cross on the page. Did you want to ask if everybody could see that, Mark? They're, they're, I think they're seeing it, Cindy, And um, but if you have any questions about what she's doing, you can go ahead and type them in, and we'll see if we can take some of those. But so we can all see I've clearly. done so far, I'm going to demonstrate how we draw the initial outline very quickly, Mark, and then I'll move into coloring, doing the graphite transfer method and coloring it. So great, great. with this method, this is the construction drawing method of achieving your first initial outline drawing. So to begin with, we move over to the pencil drawing and we just sketch on some little angles everywhere we see the form change. So you just make your way around the drawing and place some little angles around the curve of the apple. Just sketch little angles. This is the first thing that we're doing and these little angles are going to help us to get a more accurate drawing. This is just much nicer and easier and more accurate than just trying to draw the apple straight out. And another way you could have started this construction drawing was just by drawing a big circle to begin with. And then these little angles in, in between. So that's all I've done so far and then a simple curve to indicate the stem direction. Now we can move back over to our drawing and the first thing we're going to do is capture the angle on the drawing with our pencil. Oh, just before I do that though, even though I've already done this for us, Mark, I've stuck the two pieces of paper together. Mm. Now this is really important because if you're doing this comparison work and now I'm going to be using my vertical and horizontal comparison skills. Now that is a, one of the first skills that we learn, one of the first major comparison skills. There's no particular order for your comparison skills, but there are four altogether. Now, the one that I'm talking about at the moment is your ability to compare angles to a horizontal or vertical line. And I'm going to be using that skill very carefully at the moment. But in order to be able to compare something, in other, in, in other words, in order to be able to compare the angles from this drawing to that drawing, they have to stay exactly in relationship to one another at all times. So I stick them together, Mark. <laughs> so one page doesn't end up floating off That's over practical. here on this angle and okay. the other one off on that angle. <laughs> Very good. So we stick them together and then we can move them around, which is really important as well to be able to do. Um, so let's go with the angles. So first of all, I'm going to capture the angle onto my sheet. 
and then I just sketch that little angle. I'm not really interested in the length of the angle at all, I'm just catching the angles. Keeping the angle there, and you can just quickly sketch it. Keep it in your mind, just keep it in your memory. I've already got a little sketch here to help guide me, but you just keep it in your memory. And then you double check it to be sure. Just keep it in your mind so you, you, you lay your pencil down and then you remember that and then you quickly sketch it. And then you go back and check it again to make sure that you've got the right angle captured so that you're happy with it. Check your angles. Make sure you haven't missed any. I'll just firm up that one. This is a really fantastic way of working. It's nice and quick and nice and spontaneous. Same, that means the same thing. Sometimes I say silly things when I'm drawing while I talk, so excuse me if I say something silly. Now we're using this um, original measurement. This is why this first guideline is so important, that 8 centimetres. You know, it was 8 centimetres wide. I don't know if I said that. But anyway, the drawing's 8 centimetres wide by 10 high. And this is really important, Mark, because I'm using that to know how far, how wide to do my apple. Can you see? Okay, you know? so you're saying the drawing sheet itself are, is are those dimension is that dimension? Yeah, yeah, this the is apple. the same. Okay. This initial cross here is so important. That's it has the dimension. To be identical you're to that. Okay. Now, if you wanted to draw your apple bigger than the photograph, then you just simply work out a calculation for how much bigger yours is going to be. Scale it up. Yeah, scale it up and just work with angles as well. So this is just all about doing really quick sketching to get your initial apple outline. We've got to get this outline down. This final angle I'm getting here. There. So we've got all the major angles. And then we're going to go for this lovely angle here hmm. at the base of the um, apple stem and then we can pop in the curve for the apple stem and I'm looking at how far away from that central line that that stem begins hmm. it begins a little way over and stops just before the top of the um, the line there and we also look at negative spaces when we're drawing so this is our um, comparison of spaces skill as well coming into play here. Mm -hmm. And the comparison of spaces skill is taught um, all, all throughout the course you're using that. Look how the shape's the same in there to there. So I'm looking at that as well. And now at this stage I can pop in that little um, shadow of the stem if I want to. And now once we've completed that stage, we can then sketch the apple in. And I have another drawing here because you, once you've drawn all over that one, it's quite hard to see the, <laughs> you know, the apple itself. So then you can grab another photo, and it is good to have another high-resolution photo printed out on photo-quality paper as well as your thin, you know, one printed on thin, cheap paper. You can also have a high-quality one, or look at your screen. Now, I normally wouldn't use this one, Mark. It's just that I can't look at the screen while I'm talking and all of that at the same time, oh, so I've grabbed okay. this one. So now, this is the really wonderful part. Once you've got these angles in here, this apple is just a breeze to draw. And you can just sketch in all of those shapes. And also, remember to use sketching. Sketching is so important when you're using outline shapes, you know, when you're drawing your outline shapes. Don't draw with this single hard line because it's very difficult to erase and it's also not as easy to get beautiful curves with. So you use sketching all the time. Turn your page around so that your hand is on the inside of the curve. Just for ease of use. Uh, Cindy Bruce is asking, what what kind of a pencil are you using here for the rough sketching? Is that a? Oh, that's just. I'm just using a two B, um, Bruce. Your two B drawing pencil. Yeah, just a two B drawing pencil. I'm actually using a um, clutch pencil. I love clutch pencils. I use them all the time. Oh, good question, Bruce. Because now I can tell everybody else this great tip that I might have forgotten if you hadn't have asked that question. <laughs> this is brilliant. Do you know what I do if my pencils break? Right? This is so good. 
First of all, I'll, tell, I'll explain something. Faber Castell clutch pencils come in um, two different sizes, and this one, the fatter one, is about 3.2 mil wide, I think it is, Mark. Anyway, it's quite a lot wider than the usual clutch pencils, and I believe that the Faber Castell is quite unusual in that, that it can hold a lot thicker um, width of lead in it. So I use one of these to, haha, <laughs> watch this. Watch this, my broken pencils <laughs> go in there. So if my tips break, I don't have to be mortified because the tips of our pencils break a lot and you can use it in the clutch. What do you think of that? I saved my tips, see? Pretty neat. No good wasting them. Thanks for that, for that question. So I'm just sketching. I'm sketching with a 2B. Normally I sketch with a HB because it's easier to erase, but I really wanted you to be able to see the drawing here. So what I've done is I've just sketched the outline shape of the apple and I'm looking at the drawing, making sure that I've got that shape correct. And now that I've finished that outline drawing, I'm going to work on the little curve here, to add that little curve, and then the stem. So we can then go to the next stage. I'll just show you the bigger drawing that you see in your notes where I've added all of the little details as well. And I'll just quickly do that now for you. So it's a good idea at this stage just to get a really gentle feel for the shape of the apple. Just sort of get that spiraling effect happening. Just sketch it very, very lightly just so that you understand the way that those patterns are going to sort of fall out and away and down from the apple very, very lightly. And then you can sketch in some of the major little shapes there. Just some of the... And get a feel for... Go back to here. Go, go back to your little drawing here. Make sure you put in this little highlight. This is really important. And again, you can use this little um, cross-section. It's so handy, Mark, this little cross-section, because you can see exactly where to place things. Sure, yeah. A little proportion tool. Do you ever use that, Mark? I have a little bit. Not like you. I love it because you can get these beautiful freehand drawings so quick just by using that. So we're just sketching in that basic outline and then we're just popping in some of these patterns. She, um, said, she said patterns, guys. Yeah, <laughs> these little patterns on the apple. Make sure they curve a little bit to follow the shape of the form. And don't try and put everything in. We're going to do that later. Just some major little, what I call landmarks. Just some major landmarks. That's about all that you need to put in. I don't know if you can see that there. We get a sense of it, yeah. It'll be sharper in the, in the replay, the video as well. And then what you can do is... We're going to trace that to quality drawing paper. Now, so now I'm demonstrating all of that that we spoke about in those notes. And now we're going to transfer. We want that Apple outline drawing onto our good quality paper, ready to start yes. colouring it. Yes. So what I'm doing now is, first of all, I'm going to stick it to the top of the quality drawing paper. And now this is important. We only want to use two or three little pieces of tape along the top. I usually use three just so it's really safe, Mark, so it doesn't come off. Okay. And only stick it along the top so that we can lift it up and down. Mm. Then we get our sheet of Saral, S-A-R-A-L. Or you can also use Trace Down. I use both. Trace down is really good as well. Um, I love These trace will be down. These in the PDF, guys. These products. So make sure, though, you see this side. One side has got graphite on it. The other side hasn't. Make sure that you put it so that it's graphite side down, underneath your drawing. Okay. There. Now that's on. Now don't press too hard when you do this. So what we're doing is we're just going over the apple now, only our outline, not all that mess that I made. 
beautiful little curves. Not pressing too hard, but I do have to press a little bit harder than usual, Mark, so everybody can see it. Okay. And then I'll then I'll putty it back afterwards. Remember that there are different little shapes around these curves of the apple. It's not just a straight curve. So I've done the outline and now I'm just going to very gently go around the pattern, my little white highlight area. You're still using your 2B pencil? I am. I'm using the 2B. You can use a 2H or a 2B. And I'm pressing moderately hard, not too hard, otherwise there'll be indentations on my page. And I'm just putting in a few of the major landmarks, like I said before. Everything else will be made up as we go along. Okay, so once we've done that, oh, we'll just peek before we take it off. That's come out really, really well. Can you see that? Uh, yes. Now, of course, that's too dark. And your drawing will probably come out too dark as well. So what we then do is we putty it back. So we use a putty eraser or a kneaded eraser. Mm -hmm. And then we can just pull that back just by dabbing. I pressed way too hard then because I really wanted you to see it. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind, that's fine. Now the other thing I do is you can draw your shadow edge on or, sorry, you can trace it on or you can just sketch it. I sometimes like to just really, really lightly sketch it very, very lightly. You can also draw that with colour pencil if you want to. I'm just going to gently draw in some a bit wider one there. So I'm, I'm just sketching it really lightly because I don't like it if it comes out too heavy, the shadow. I'm just going to raise that bit there, that was a bit small and then just pull it back a bit more again so you can barely see it. We have to be really careful with um, graphite underneath a colour pencil drawing. Really get rid of it because especially with the yellow that's going to really show up. Mm, and also it. graphite yeah. repels colour pencil. Okay, there, done that. Now, I've got a whole of pencils lined up here already. Um, so I'll show you how many colours there are. I have this little tray that I use, Mark, and that I cart around with me because um, then I can just move it around on my surface. So there are all my pencils ready to go. They're right next to me. And I'm going to begin now. First of all, I'm using colour 915, and this is um, lemon yellow. So it's a lovely, cool lemon yellow. And I'm just going to colour in. I'm following the shape of the form now. This is just a light layer so that we just get the feel of the form in this first layer. Now normally when we're working with colour pencil, we try hard not to see lines in the work, you know, like patches and that. And so instead, we shade in little patches, you know, little tiny neat patches like this, little that we call little sets of strokes. We work very, very carefully to not achieve any markings or um, no lines showing in between our strokes. Have you prepared the edge of the pencil, the, the, the lead of either either the colour pencil or, or this graphite pencil? Yep, this is a colour pencil. So there are two different effects that we can sort of get um, with the colour pencil application. If we want to show that little tiny bit of paper coming through, then we use the pencil on a slight angle so that there's a slightly flat edge. And she shows you how to do this in the lessons, guys. Yeah. Yeah. This, how to prepare. this is actually in the Unit um, 5 lessons where Tennis has written them for us. So you'll see um, that there's two okay. ways. You know, you, you can use your pencil so that you get a bit of texture or you can use it with the very tip but either way, we work hard not to get the area really, really messy. This is really important, actually, because we don't want to see all the little patchy strokes. Because remember when we were kids, I don't know about you, Mark, but boy, I used to colour like this. Oh, me? Oh, yeah. Oh, scribble, scribble, scribble. And I used to try and get it all neat, you know, and tidy. Um, yeah. But what you end up with is you end up seeing all the lines in it. 
Now what I'm saying right. is with the apple, I want to see those lines. So that's why I'm doing it like this, because they're helping me to achieve the effect of this kind of stripy nature. Okay. So I'm using it to my advantage in this instance. Um, okay, so I'll go back to that. So I'm just going to really, I'm really roughly putting on this first layer. Every colour pencil subject that we uh, tackle has a different process or a different procedure needed. And the, the biggest challenge about working in colour pencil or doing any drawing for that matter, no matter what it is, is the decision process and the thinking process beforehand. It's thinking about what colour will I put on first? How many layers of that colour shall I put on first? Hmm. What position shall I put those little markings into? We're always asking questions. Now at this stage I don't have to think of my comparison of angle skill. Um, I'm just naturally just feeling this sort of curvy feel. You can even put in a few big strokes just to make sure that you continue to follow around the shape of the form. But at the moment I'm just having fun with this layer mark. I'm just laying this layer on. Beautiful curved strokes though. Again, this is only because I want to use these strokes in the form. If you were trying to shade this all smooth, you would not be doing it like this. If you're trying to shade it all smooth, you'd be using little sets of strokes like I demonstrated up there. Mm. It takes a while. <laughs> yeah. So I'm happy with that layer. And then the... And if I was doing this for the first time, Mark, I would be thinking about this as a sphere. I'll be thinking about the full light source where it's hitting, and it's hitting my object here. There's a little shadow that comes in behind the, the um, stem. And also, we have what we call the shadow edge area. And it's basically right where the form begins to disappear from the light. Then down here, we have what we call the cast shadow. And then in here, we're going to have reflected light. And the magic's going to happen while I'm thinking about all of those things. You know, I'm thinking about the light and shade and shadow. Everything, all at wow. once. So lots of things. Okay, so now at this stage, I'm going to introduce my... Um, oh, I've forgotten about my drawing, my image. So I'm looking at the image, and I'm going to just add some little details. So I'll put that first layer on. And I'm just going to cut a little bit around the edge too. So this is a detail stage where you just begin. Now at the top and at the back of the apple, because I'm aware of perspective, perspective is really important. Things are lighter as they go back into the distance or paler in tone um, if your background is pale or light. So I'm doing these little details very light. Things are also smaller as they recede into the distance. So these little patterns are smaller and less detailed. That's another rule. All of that is taught in the perspective unit, Mark, unit five. No, sorry, unit four, perspective. So, so all I'm doing is just, I'm just scribbling on these little patterns now. Just adding in some detail. All the while thinking about the shape and naturally we don't put the little de the very tiny details until last. Has anyone got any questions at all? No, they're they're watching and so with this top area in into the um into the very pale yellow part, that's gonna be all very pale yellow later. I'm using a lighter pe a more orangey colour pencil, it's P uh, stomach nine two two. Still Prisma colour. Yeah, yeah, these are all Prisma colour. Oh, I love them. I absolutely adore this brand of pencil. It's so much fun. So then as I make my way down, now this is the important thing, I'm looking at my colour swatch here because I don't want to get the wrong red and they all look so similar, Mark. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I like to compare it. Uh-huh, I nearly grabbed the wrong one. Yeah, 922 is important. So that's what I used at the top, 922. Good. Now, as I'm moving down, I'm going to go a bit darker and my dark one is um, 93. So I'm going to go 923. Goody. It's gotten a bit blunt because I was burnishing last. This apple is hot off the press, by the way. I only finished it last night at midnight for everyone. That's right. So that's why the tutorial is not quite 100% finished. So 
I'm just going to put in a few little tiny details and then I'm going to very quickly move into the main body. In fact, and I'll do that first because that's how I showed it in the notes. There are many ways to do these things. There's no absolute definite way. There's just many different ways. So what I did next was I put the shadow edge in um, and the big shadow shapes. So these really predominant markings. Oh, you're going in quite dark off the bat. Oh, yeah. Wow. Because this is going to have to stay throughout the whole of the drawing. You know why, Mark? I use these as my guidelines. Yeah. These are little guideposts. Yes. And believe me, sorry, believe me, you need it when you're drawing this big, because this is my final drawing. Yeah. Um, and those shapes, see how they disappear by the end of it? Yeah, and there's all covered. these layers and layers of squirkling and scribbling that I did to soften it all down. So you really do rely on those little guideposts. I did that with the eye as well. And the same process was used when I was creating the eye. Um, what I did was I used some of these big lines here. And this pattern was my guide. And I sort of worked in just one little stage at a time. Like I might have worked just from there to there and just did that yep. area and so on. And even here, when you're working in that area, you only work in that area. You just isolate different areas that you're working on. Yeah. And this is also, oh, I, sorry, I was looking at that PDF last night, Cindy, and it's unbelievable how much prep and build-up you're doing with all these features in the eye. Thank you. This is exciting, Mark, because you know when I talk about that magic, when, you, when you've been drawing and really studying, it's really hard work because you're really working out all the shapes. But then suddenly yeah. this moment happens where you're just doing it free form. And in here, this is when it happened for me in the eyelashes. Oh, my gosh. I was just loving it. But yeah. I was still, my eyes were still darting back and forth, though, at the actual photograph, too, that I was working from because mm. you have to compare. You're comparing angles, lines, and shapes all the time. Now, at the moment... I'm using the um, the comparison of angles and sizes skill mark. Okay. Make sure that I position these correctly. I don't want them too big. Gotta put a few in down the bottom here now. And now I'm using my um, comparison of tones skill. I'm saying to myself, my gosh, it's gonna be very dark down the bottom of this apple, so I'm going to really go in dark down here to start with. That's my comparison of tones and my knowledge of um, light and shade theory also tells me that I want my form to really be rounded so I'm going dark here as well. Now, I'm going to be laying the pencil on its side now so this is another technique. So just then I was using the tip. Now, when we're shading with a smooth shading technique we use the pencil on the side a real lot. But in colour pencil, we don't generally do that unless we're after that texture that we particularly really want. I am after that texture right now, so I can lay the pencil on the side. And now what I'm doing is I'm using my knowledge of light and shade, and I am creating this big shadow edge area. And it's this big dark area in here. So I'm not even looking at the drawing because I just know that I need my big shadow edge area put in. So this You're is putting it I in put. with a color, Cindy? You're putting it in with a color? Yes, yes, this is a darker color. This is a um, 937. Okay. Again, it'll be in the course notes. It's a lovely dark burgundy browny red color. And I'm just using just strokes again in the upward direction. Mark, I'm not being very, very neat. I don't need to be. And this is what I love about working in this kind of style that I work. I work very expressively. Uh -huh. I scribble. I um, lay on my work with a lot of emotion. I love this apple. This is what's going on in my head. I'll, I'll tell you what's going on in my head. I love this. I love this beautiful apple. I love the way it just rounds and curves. And this beautiful dark shallow edge really needs to be dark. I won't build it up too much though at all because I'm only just getting to know my little apple. Oh, there's going to be reflected light here so I won't go too dark. It's a bit darker down here though so I will go darker down here. She's talking not, to herself. See here guys, she's, just, she's having a dialogue with herself and she's completely in right brain mode right now I think. Well, this is the beauty mark. I can switch back very quickly. I can, I, I can snap back out of it if I have to but... Right, um, right. 
you know, we don't really want to because it's so nice. So I'm just adding a bit more of the darker tone there because I saw some, but not too dark back behind here because it was receding. So we don't want it to. So there we go. We've got to that level now. And yes. if you're looking in the course notes, you could even follow along with us and we'd be up to around at that stage. So I'm quite happy with that. That's just a basic, really rough foundation. And now I need to yeah. move into yeah. my reds. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce um, my major red color, which is number 923. And I'm just going to start putting that in. Again, I'm following the shape of the form and I'm not pressing too hard. It's very important that we don't build up too many layers here again. Kelly's asking, Cindy, uh, do you have to be concerned about your hand smearing your drawing as you work? It's something I always have to think about because I'm left-handed. With graphite I do, but not with colour pencil. Um, these Prisma colour pencils are amazing because I know that when I use um, pencils that have got a bit harder, harder um, texture, um, that the oils of my hand seem to repel the surface, but if I was being really neat and tidy, I would have a little piece of paper under my hand. I love J.D. Hilberry's tip. And I will get it now that you've mentioned it. This is... Um, he uses a piece of duct tape. He taught me this tip. I adore his work. So use a piece of duct tape to, duct to the outside of your hand oh, and he's okay. a little piece of scrap paper under it. I hope I'm doing <laughs> okay. it right, JD. Another use of duct tape, yet another use. So thanks to whoever asked that question. I forgot who asked it. Kelly. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Kelly. I'm a bit naughty because I should really use that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in, you're trying to compact a lot in for us this morning. Well, also that big large apple took me five hours to draw, the large one, so I'm zooming yeah. along with this little one. Oh, you are. Color pencils take time to do it like this. So, again, I'm putting the red on, but I'm really layering this layer on very, very softly. And I'm going to introduce now some more of these little textures. I'm using a bit darker pencil. Making sure it follows the shape of the curve. And I have to put my finger here so I don't get lost. So just following that shape of the curve. Now I'm doing some little tiny sharper markings as well with the tip. Most of the markings will be added at the end though. I think the hardest part about doing colour pencil is the impatient factor because at this stage it just looks miserable. It looks weak and dull and you just don't think it's ever going to get there, you know. Yeah. I love it towards the end, Mark. Yeah. It starts to really build up. Oh, it's such a trip. It's, it's amazing how it all comes together at the last. It's so exciting to see. Now, I may be doing this slightly out of the same, um, you know, routine as the notes because I've forgotten exactly which um, colours I put on next, but it is a combination of all the different colours anyway, so I'm going to end up with the same result. But if you see the notes and you say, oh, hang on a minute, she used 3, 4, 2 or whatever there, um, doesn't matter because I'm only still using all the same pencils. Now... I'm not using a real sharp point here either because I'm not I don't want to build up the page too quick. So in fact it's a little bit too sharp. So I'm just going to wear it down on a piece of sandpaper. I've got a piece of smooth sandpaper here and I'm just move I'm just wearing the tip down to what we call a chisel point tip. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see that, but mm -hmm. um, the chisel yeah. point tip is taught in unit one, week five in graphite pencil. But anyway, it's a chisel point tip. It basically puts in a little lips on the tip, but it makes it lovely and blunt. We need it blunt just for shading in these areas here. We'll go back to the tip later. It's like she's painting, you know. And uh, there was a question, Cindy, about the transparency of color pencils. How, how would you compare them to the transparency of, say, watercolors? It, or are they really a transparent medium? Can you use them in a transparent way? Oh, are you using them transparently here? 
No, th um, they are being transparent at the moment. But they're going to build up to being more opaque. They are very transparent if you want some of them on very lightly and building your layers up very softly. You know, for example, look at this. Look at how the beautiful colours underneath show through. And actually, um, Tannis is the expert at doing this translucent sort of effect. I love her um, peppers that you see in our Unit 5 course notes. Mm. And she'll teach you how to do the transparent method. Colour pencils are really known for their transparency. The way that I'm teaching it um, is a painterly effect. So I'm specifically going for a very built up, very um, painterly effect. But traditionally we use colour pencils, don't we, in a more, um, more transparent, sort of translucent effect, don't we? Yes, the way you're working with them here. Yeah, at the moment, but they're going to build up so they're quite opaque. I mean, the final effect that I've created with the apple, wherever it's gone, and even with the eye, that is not a transparent effect, see? Look at that. No, it's not. It's it's Pretty just opaque. like a it's like an oil painting. Yeah, it's amazing. That's the word. That's the word. Yeah. It is like an oil painting mark, and that's what I'm trying to achieve. And I call this hyperrealism because it's not just like the photograph, it's sort of exaggerated. Yeah, I call it better than real. It's it's really yeah. not photorealism. It's better than that. And you'll Thank see it in the PDF and you can see it in all of Cindy's work. Okay, now I've just put on those two coats. Um, so I've got the depth there and I've got the tone just started now, the hue just started. So I've just got the basic foundation and now I'm going to start to really mean business because I'm going to start burnishing and really building up some textures. So um, bear with while you guys are watching her, I'm going to remind you that in the details box to the right of the the broadcast uh, is the um, is the info page. You can click on the uh, uh, you can click on the read more 14 lines, and it's full of links in there. The first link is going. Is, you might go ahead and click on that if you want to, or uh, in in another tab and take a look. It's Cindy's PDF about drawing the eye. Her daughter Isha's eye, and uh, it's a it's a fantastic lesson, nearly 50 pages long, and you can download that. It's for sale for seven dollars. If you want to teach yourself going through the PDF carefully, or if you want some instructor help from Cindy, uh, it's it's 27 dollars, and you can order that on the page. It's a, it'll be an education all of its own uh, in color pencils. Uh, as you, when you click on read more in the paragraph, you'll see a link at, at the very bottom of the box. It says, um, "It says download and read Angela's personal story of learning to draw with the Cindy Wider method and see her progress unfold." It's a wonderful PDF. It actually shows Angela's lessons as she's progressing through Cindy's teaching, and that's a free PDF, uh, kind of a little booklet that you can download. We're going to be sending out the links in an email to the PDF of this Apple demonstration with Cindy's instructions, her product uh, recommendations, all her tips, and all these beautiful reproductions uh, that will be free. And then there's also a little box in the details box that says official site. If you click on that, that's, uh, that's my affiliate link for Cindy's complete drawing course. And you can, it's a sales page for the course, and you can read all about Cindy's lessons and uh, what she's doing over at her site, drawpj.com. The complete drawing course is unlike anything else out there. It will uh, unleash unleash your drawing power and your, your ability. It's, it's amazing. And we're going to be telling you a little more about the course next week in a special session with Cindy. It's going to be three indispensable drawing tips that she's going to share with us and I think she's going to have some other surprises up her sleeve. She's going to talk a little bit more about the comparison method, her special her special uh, approach to learning drawing and now she's included color pencils in her curriculum with uh, Tannis's help and next uh, Monday same time from 10 to 11, Monday March 16th from 10 to 11 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'll send you a reminder out about that. We'll have a couple more things to give away. And um, this this week, Thursday, 
Can, yeah, we'll, yes, Susan, we'll do a quick review of the four methods of comparison uh, in just a moment with Cindy. And then also, guys, uh, on uh, we've got a really fun book talk coming up this Thursday from 3 to 4. I'll send you an email out on that. We'll put some links on this page as well. Cindy's husband, Stuart, who is also a fine artist, they met through fine art. He has written a delightful book, PDF book, about how to have your own art show, how to do it yourself, uh, save that 50% commission, and uh, create a show and sell some some art. It's He's got a, a real fun slideshow. He's going to kind of walk us through some of the highlights of his PDF book. It'll be a Q&A and a, kind of an informal chat. We'll, uh, we'll all have our hot cocoa, and we can talk to Stuart uh, and um, talk about creating an art show. You don't always need a gallery. You don't always need the fancy odors, odors on sticks and uh, cocktails. You can do it you can do it differently and sell just as much art. Uh, and uh, his Stuart's book is called Your Own Art Show. And uh, we'll, so we'll have a fun visit with Stuart on Thursday about that. I'll send out a reminder. And yeah, Cindy, while you're talking, can you can you give us a quick review of the four methods of comparison that you teach about? Yeah, sure. So. Um there are four major comparison skills that, that we all need to be able to draw a likeness and there is the comparison of angles, so we're comparing angles and lines to a horizontal or a vertical. There's a comparison of sizes, so how big something is compared to something else and in relation to other things around it and in its environment. Um, then there's the comparison of um, light and dark, so various levels of light and shade. The beautiful thing about the comparison of light and shade is that we can use things like value scales um, to, to help us to put the logical sort of um, process into comparing light and shade skills, you know, light and shade tones, mm -hmm. because we really need to look at things in various levels of light and shade to be able to draw them um, realistically. And the final one is our ability to compare space, spaces which okay. is really important. I was just going to tell everybody too, I'm still just layering up and just adding a few details as I go. I'm, I'm still only about a third of the way there with putting the, the colour pencil on. So it is a lot of layers that we have to put on. Um, sorry. So then the final one is your ability to compare spaces. Now, I really love it when we think of these four major comparison skills because it just helps us to um, make the whole drawing experience not quite so overwhelming. If you try to look at an object and just do all of those comparison skills all at once, it can really be overwhelming. But you break it down to the various um, comparison skills and that's the way I teach it. We teach it with just um, one or two major comparison skills at a time, mm -hmm. you know, rather than um, trying to do, deal with a whole lot. I sort of put it this way, sometimes you walk into an art class, maybe for your first time, and then you see this beautiful arrangement in front of you, and the art teacher is so good at it, and she just catches away or paints away and says, okay, your turn, and you're yeah. looking going, oh my gosh, where do I begin? Yeah. So what we need to do is we need to understand that there are four you know, major ways of looking at forms and objects. And if we break it down into those four major ways of looking, it makes it much easier. So, for example, when you're thinking of your comparison of angle skills, that's when you're just doing the outline drawing. When you're thinking of your light and shade skills, that's when you're toning. But the added complexity comes in when you're adding colour. Because when you add colour, you've also got to think in, you've got to think of colour in tone. And that can be challenging for a lot of people, especially when they've moved from colour pencing, colour pencil. I mean, when they've moved from graphite into colour pencil, it can be very challenging to start thinking of it in light and shade. Now I'm beginning to burnish, so I'm beginning to really, really build up. And I love burnishing in little circles as well. So I'm using what I call circling. Circling is when you go like that. Are you burnishing hard or burnishing lightly? Medium now. Medium. So I'm building up the pressure. Okay. And I love that, Mark, because this, and I'm using more of a tip, because, you know, colour pencil drawing really involves your body, your soul, and your emotions. Yeah. I just sit here colouring in, I'm building up, I'm crescendoing, it's like piano, you know? 
when you press yeah. gradually harder and softer and it, it's almost like you're actually going into the apple that's you know and that's that's the way she works with uh, regular black and white graphite too it's a, it's a very immersive experience so so it was it was angles shape and space and lights and dark okay, we're comparing ang yeah we're comparing angles to a vertical or horizontal line and then we're comparing sizes of objects to one another okay and we do we do that even with cutting a, cup, a chocolate cake in half and into pieces even a little kid will say hey your half's bigger than mine mm -hmm. we're comparing angles to lines and verticals when we're straightening a painting on the wall and the um, comparison of sh of light and shade is when we can tell what time of day it is just by looking outside, you know, the, the um, color in the sky. And spaces. The uh, comparison of spaces is really difficult. It's when you feel like your room's too crowded and you need to add more things or if you need to add more things or eliminate. It's just your ability to just sense that, you know, space. But with art, we use the study of composition, the theory of composition, to help us to arrange space so that it is visually pleasing for, right, right. you know, for, for everyone, not just ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. So these these are all elements of design. This is very foundational stuff, and she has put it together in a very unique way that makes it, um, that well results in drawings like this. Uh, a bunch of fun comments are coming in. Uh, uh, Cindy, uh, Marcia has a real good comment about a question about can water soluble color pencils be used in this same way? That's very good. I've run into a lot of people who like to use. No, uh, I don't like to do it. No, they're too no. waxy and they build up wrong, uh, wrong, not wrong, differently. So, okay. no, I don't think they're, su they're not suitable for this Wally. technique. Uh, Bruce Ross is saying it looks like you're maintaining awareness of reflected areas. As you're building yes, this thanks, up. Bruce. I am, um, especially the full light area, but also some other areas where I know that the light's hitting the form as well. So major light sources in in the form, and then this shadow edge. This is still quite flat because I haven't built up my um, real dark shadow edge area in here yet. I'll do that later with texture. I'm also working on the um, reflected light areas, which is too bright yet, and it'll be sunk back shortly. Okay. So, thanks. Yes, he's right. I am really yep. aware. Madeline is asking when is Stewart's hangout, uh, and so Stewart's hangout is this Thursday, from three to four. That's this Thursday, March twelfth. I'll I'll uh, I'll send you out some information on it. We'll have a, an event page just like this one, and uh, his ideas are so practical and so pragmatic, and it's about using these very practical, kind of ingenious ideas and putting just that little creative spark of fun, uh, and. Uh, fun and, and magic into these events and and that's how you make them a success and that's what he'll talk about in uh, he and Cindy have done a lot of shows like this and they've done very well with them and um, so it's I'm, you don't get to hear an artist talk about how they promote put on their own show and promote their show apart from gallery now they they're both represented in galleries as well but this is an alternative method for artists and uh, so Three to four this Thursday. Let's see, Kelly saying, Cindy, how do you go about deciding what colors you need to make your drawing look like your photo? Because with some colors having layers of colors on top, it seems tricky to know what the original color should be. Sorry if this is a basic. No, that's very good. That's a very, very important question. Thank you for asking it. Because yeah. you know what? I don't think many people realize, but choosing the colors is so difficult and you do have to spend a lot of time. I spend a long time choosing colors um, to make sure they are the colors that I want. What I do when I choose the main color to start with is I think of what is the central color of that object and then I begin with that as my base tone and then I, um, I'm very careful that I don't use um, complementary colors on top of each other so in other words we won't use purple on top of yellow because if we do that it can be grayed or muddy if we're going to do that I would put say um, I would go yellow red and then purple on top of that okay um, see, see the red purples okay here because I'm putting red on top again but we have to always think ahead about what colors we are using um, and, and we 
I stick to sort of a color palette. So I'm using all my warm colors. And I use a lot of warm colors to bring the objects forward and cool to send them back. Yeah. And try to stay with a limited palette if I can. Um, yeah. As in a limited, uh, well, there's there's a lot of colors, but they're all in the red range, see? All and notice, the red notice how, how she uses a scratch paper to, to check her colors like, like a painter would. And she she put all her little palette. She drew. She scribbled out her little color squares on a on a, another sheet that, that she showed us. Um, it it doesn't hurt to play around with these colors a little bit beforehand to see what you're going to use. Oh, and this is another fun thing about these pencils that I like. Anyone would think I'm an advocate for these pencils, but I'm not. I don't sell them or anything, but I just love them. You know what you can do, Mark? Like with these little textures here, mm -hmm. you can just add them into the thick. Um, yellow thing in just some random shapes, and then you can burnish again and smudge them, and they just look they just look beautiful. They do. They look beautiful. Uh, Nancy's what? asking, how will you get the shine to the apple with water or just pencil? Well, there's no water being used here, Nancy. Not this time. No. Um, to get the shine, I'm going to go in with um, some burnishing. Um, oh, don't do that. Watch out, that's not dirty. My white gets dirty. She, she's, so she's, there's the white the, of her paper. The shine itself, this apple hasn't got very much, so I'm just getting a little tiny bit of highlight around the edge. And this little shine here is the majority of the shine on the apple. You've got to be careful you don't pull the outer tones in there. I'm doing this earlier than what I should, just to demonstrate. Okay. I should be blowing. Where's my brush? As we start to burnish, we get really, really messy. So we have to be careful. So, um, so I, yeah, I'm burnishing with the white to pull out the lighter tones. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is start going in dark to really get the shadow edge started to build up. And this is what I did. I did so many little tiny markings here. It just took ages. I can't believe you're you're doing all this in just this one hour long session with us, Cindy. Look how much you've you've gone through this apple, how much you've developed it. It would normally have taken, <laughs> you know, hours. Well, it is rough, and that's why I'm providing the course notes as well. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing some circling and some dashes and dots. Okay. And I'm just reminding myself of the texture. But what I'm doing at the same time, Mark, is I'm really concentrating on my shadow edge area, which I can even just scribble in basically to really reinforce this dark edge because if I don't it's going to look really flat so I want this to come in really dark now see that area there I don't know if you can see that I'll go a little over bit. It again like okay. that yeah see that area so you, you're using that dark brown again yeah okay it's a reddish burgundy brown color burgundy brown and I'm just but then I'm also using some to creep up into here uh, Laura is saying, can we use colored pencils to do other styles of children's illustration? For example, to create a less detailed picture with a soft texture more like pastels would make. Oh, of course. That would be beautiful. Definitely. This is just one technique that I'm showing, one method. And actually, Tennis's method would be good for that. Um, when I say Tennis's method, she does it both ways, of course, mm -hmm. um, like this as well. But she loves that layered, um, you know, more translucent look, which you'll see in the course notes too. Um, where she builds up the yeah the lighter effect that you're talking about. Mm, yeah, and this and work learning to work one way will only inform the other ways that you work. They all sort of reinforce each other and nourish each other. Well, that method that um, the more translucent method is taught in um, unit five of the complete about. drawing course. Okay. Yeah, and this method that I'm using is taught at the end in the final project as well, so you're getting the benefit of both sort of uh, textures in Unit 5. And this is the same uh, method you're using for the eye drawing as well, and the yeah. eye exercise. Okay. And the strawberry in the course notes. And the strawberry in the course notes. Strawberry in Unit 5. Yeah. And it's the same method as this. We're, we'll, we're going to put on this page, we'll put the link when the, when the PDF is ready for the Apple exercise, which Cindy is giving you. Uh, I'm going to put the link up on the page and give you the code that will let you go to the page and just download the whole PDF lesson. Uh, but it's not ready yet. They're, they're, they're going to be finishing it up today. So it'll be on this page uh, probably t by tomorrow at the latest. Yeah. And then we'll send an email out as well and uh, try to let you know that it's here. 
Can I just say in answer to that question about the translucent thing, about mm -hmm. whether they're translucent, when yeah. you're working with a translucent effect and more of a softer effect, you've got to be very, very careful of your application. You've got to work much more slowly and carefully and you work in little patches at a time, like oh. I'm doing here actually, this sort of for a smoother look. You've got to work in little patches and be very careful. Cheryl, one of your students, says, really nice, the finished apple does look absolutely real. Yeah, I'm still working Sherilyn. towards it. Thanks, Sherilyn. That's lovely. Hi. Great to see you. Hear you. <laughs> um, I won't even bother with the shadow right now because I really want to keep going with the apple. Okay. Because it's really important to see these later stages. Um, so now I've got a bit of that dark tone in there. It does take a while, though, really, to build up. And some of the little patterns have to be really carefully drawn, you know, just a bit more precisely. And then back in again with some more burnishing. Now, I could use some um, odorless mineral terps here, so, uh, but I don't really, I don't really like it very much, to tell you the truth. I don't even use it very much. I used it a little bit in the eye. Mm. Okay, so that is a little liquid, a, a little medium that you'd be introducing into a color pencil finished piece. Now I'm starting to get messy. On occasion. So I will get this paper. And I love to just swap between the pencils just to slowly just build up and smudge in the texture. So I'm using the side of the pencil too now. Yeah, the, the not the side, but the um, chisel point tip now to just pull it together. Okay, okay. The, the, in the shading and form class we took with Cindy, it was so interesting to see how we would work along, work along. The pieces would be okay; they'd be okay. And then in the in the last in the last twenty percent of the time, um, the magic would happen, and it would just come to life. And it was just as a result of doing what you see Cindy doing here, very carefully working, closing in on the lights, starting to push in the darks and the contrast, going, getting the whole full range of contrast in her picture. Contrast is just as important with color as it is with black and white. The reason why I'm doing this um, circling on the side now is because I'm trying to leave a little bit of paper still for the red tone to come back in in a minute. Okay. So I'm just using the uh, chisel point tip I'm going to just soften down this area now. I've barely worked on this. You'll find that in the other drawing I've worked on it a lot more, but I've been building that up to try and get that achieved too. A lot of dotting going on. Uh, Bruce was asking, is the initial photo, was it digital or was it like 35 millimeter photographic? That's a digital nitrate? camera. Digital, yeah. Okay. Susan says, thank you for covering the, the four methods of comparison. Hmm, my pleasure. See, I just bounce around to keep the whole drawing together. I'll do that little detail later. Oh, I love this stage. This is where the fun starts to really happen. You start to really feel it slowly coming together. We've still got a little way to go yet though. It's it's very much of a feeling thing, isn't it, Cindy? It's it's um it's not a linear processing kind of deal. It's um not you kind of feel it with your whole body. Yeah. Not at this stage. Early on it was, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. A little more analytical. But the whole process is very analytical because you're constantly thinking I mean normally if I hadn't have done this already, I wouldn't know the things that I know now. See, I've already done it once, so I know what colors I'm using and everything. Right, right. Um, because I'm just remembering it from when I did it yesterday. But the first time I did it, I had so many decisions to make, too. I'm just going to ground this apple now a little bit more. Some black. I always put another color over the top if I'm using black, then I move into something else, you know, with it. I don't like just plain black, but it's a great foundation. 
Is it like is it a Prismacolor black or is it some sort of graphite? It's all Prismacolor, yeah. All Prismacolor, okay. So the I project lesson, guys, is on the is in the details box. It's the first link you see. It's uh, for sale, and then the um, you can go the self teach method, and, or you can have uh, a teacher, a, an instructor assist you. Have Cindy work with you. Uh, let's yeah, I'll be see. working personally with everybody for the next, um, you know, a few enrollments because I'm actually taking on some more students at the moment, um, which I'm really enjoying. So I have yeah. a few seats available. It's a really good time to start the course about this time of the year too, because then you finish in time for Christmas, and um, along the way you'll find that you can that you'll be learning how to do portraiture and. Portraits are great to give for, you know, even wedding presents and Christmas presents, and they all fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. So they do. there's reasoning yeah. for all of them. Um, so the first one is you learn how to draw an outline really well. So you learn in depth those little techniques I was showing you tonight, but there's more to learn as well. So you learn outline. how to draw better in outline. Yeah, during that Very first important. one. And then the second one, you learn all about shading and the theory of light and shade so that you can achieve um, you know, form and so that you're able to see form and understand form when you're looking at it from a photograph because it's just not enough to just be able to look at the photograph. And you learn construction, drawing and things like that in Unit 1. Sorry, so the second unit is shading and form. Mm -hmm. The third unit is portraiture foundations. And we, I use portraiture, Mark, because it's one of the best things to develop confidence. When you... When you can say to yourself, hey, I can draw a little child really well, you know, the portrait of a child or myself, you know, really well, then you feel that you've really mastered something and you'll learn a lot in that unit, a real lot about drawing in general. And then you move into perspective. Perspective is so important as well. A lot of people um, don't realise how important um, perspective is and they tend to think of it as the last thing they want to choose. But I teach that very fun because I teach it with colour, um, you know, coloured lines rather than the ABC method. So it's a lot of fun, that um, course. It's the um, composition course. So everything pulls together then into the final unit of composition. And that's really exciting because the composition course is um, very, very valuable. It teaches you how to pull together the images. And I know that with... Children's Picture Book Illustration, there are various um, different compositions that are successful. You know, for example, you've got your vignette that you use, you know, your little vignette where you just have a little sketch in on a page and then you can do images that are full bleed where you have to design the full um, composition and then you might have just little single images. But with the composition course, that's where you learn where to put things on the page and why. And I think that's one of the biggest Need. Do you have some last minute thoughts about this apple drawing that you're working on? How close are you to being complete with it? Probably about another half hour. Oh, is that um, all? That's amazing. Because I really do need to build up the detail, and that will be coming. That'll yeah. be coming next. You know, building up the detail. Another thing too, when you're working like that, is to work. It's good to work larger. I like to work larger. I don't like to work as small as this, but I needed to to get it done on time. Yes. Um, I think I'll just put my face back. Um, just to finish up, I think it's just a really wonderful thing to um, try to sketch, you know, try to sketch very, very roughly to warm up before you draw, and especially for colour pencil work, to really just lightly sketch. And mm. I love... Um, Mark's initial course where, you know, right in the beginning, Mark, where you talk about how to get the action into the object. So just getting a feel for the action is um, one of the most important things because, you know, in the beginning with the apple, how I was just getting to know it, getting to feel that waterfall effect yeah. and that form. And I think that's the most important thing before you begin any drawing is just lots of sketching, lots of research, analysing yeah. what it is and spending just ages investigating the actual subject that you're drawing. Would you agree with Good that, Mark? Point. I would totally agree with that. So own that subject. That's point. The gesture is really important. Uh, Cindy, this has been terrific. I'm going to uh, end the broadcast.
Uh, reminding you guys that all those different links are in that box over there. If you have any questions, leave them on the page for Cindy. Uh, we will see you, I hope, uh, this Thursday from 3 to 4, March 12, 3 to 4, U.S. Central Time for Stuart's program on your, having your own art show. And oh, that's going to be so much fun. I'm talking with him, remember, too. Uh, Cindy and Stuart will be presenting we'll together. So that'll be double, double the fun. And they have done, <laughs> they will tell some war stories, too, because they will be speaking from lots of experience and lots of adventures in this topic of promoting your work as an artist and having shows. Uh, we got a lot of people saying thank you on the page. Thank oh, you. Thank and you. I'll thank you, too. That was just wonderful to, for you to share your time with us and your, your expertise and your knowledge and your brilliance and your beautiful <laughs> work. And so, um, thank you too, we'll, Mark. We'll, we'll end the broadcast, and we will see you guys. Uh, I hope Thursday, and then next week we'll have another little program with Cindy early in the week. Another little wonderful lesson for us online through the magic of the internet, all the way from Yorkshire, England. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Cindy. everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye. We'll talk to you all soon. Bye, bye.